The news began to spread like wildfire when rumors surfaced that the Mexican government was thinking to legalize Bitcoin. However, investors should take a deeper look at what's going on before assuming whether this move is a good indicator for the cryptocurrency world. The Mexican Senate is due to decide the fate of highly anticipated news that would make Bitcoin legal tender money, following in the strategic footsteps of their neighboring country, El Salvador. In the most recent development, Mexican Senator Indira Kempis of Nuevo León has spoken about her ambitions to make Mexico a crypto-friendly country by proposing the proposed Bitcoin legal tender bill and asking Senate support for its implementation. Policymakers, on the other hand, are skeptical of Bitcoin at the present. Campbell told the media outlet Diario El Salvador that the country requires Bitcoin as legal money because if it does not, it will be impossible for authorities to intervene in case of failure. El Salvador, she noted, is quickly becoming a favorite destination for Bitcoin enthusiasts all around the world. However, despite the fact that Bitcoin has grown in popularity among Mexican investors, the bill's chances of passing with a majority vote in the Mexican Senate remain little to none. This could be challenging for Kempis to prove to Senate that this is indeed something that could give Mexico an advantage once it is legalized. Anthony Pompliano, on the other hand, a well-known investing expert and pandit, was thrilled when the news reached his ears. He clarified, now we have another country which is Mexico in Central America that's looking to make Bitcoin legal tender within their jurisdiction. A Mexican senator is going to put forward legislation to make Bitcoin legal tender. Pompliano explained how the narrative began with the legalization of Bitcoin in El Salvador, saying, They've kicked off a domino effect throughout South and Central America. We've seen country after country after country have local state or national politicians come forward and say, I think we should follow suit. But unfortunately, not everyone shares the same sentiments as he does or as the people on the side of legalizing Bitcoin do. Bitcoin was the first ever cryptocurrency token established by Satoshi Nakamoto in 2009 to function as a replacement for existing payment systems. The latest outbreak of the coronavirus epidemic brought the whole economic cluster to a halt. Businesses were forced to shut down. Basically, everyone who was in the business world was having a hard time adjusting to ongoing pandemic, while the crypto business saw it as something strong that could help them increase or give them a boost. Due to this, governments all across the world began looking for new methods to encourage investors to use cryptocurrency and trade it. El Salvador, of course, takes the lead in this area as they were known as the first country in the world to make Bitcoin legal money. If the law is passed by the Mexican Senate, it will be the second country to do so and that is going down in the books. When we are talking about cryptocurrencies, Kempis believes that they can help alleviate the country's challenges of financial exclusion and unbanked population growth. In other words, this can help the marginalized sectors with their financial inabilities. The senator is working on establishing a legal framework for cryptocurrency. She intends to introduce the measure during the current parliamentary session. In contrast to Kempis' vision on this, Mexico's President Andres Manuel López Obrador expressed reservations about Bitcoin, citing worries about tax fraud. Although it is a long way off by 2024, the central bank hopes to introduce a digital peso to encourage investors to adopt decentralized assets. How did Kempis even have this idea of legalizing Bitcoins? Well, her strongest drive came from the developments that she saw in El Salvador, which is now becoming a major Bitcoin center in the globe. She stated, every time El Salvador was discussed, it was always addressed issues of migration, violence and organized crime, and now the world's gaze is not on those public problems. But because of this great call at a global level with Bitcoin. Within his country, however, she is particularly concerned with ensuring that financial inclusivity and education are made a basic right for all citizens, and she is working to attain the objective and, ideally, allow the Senate and the President to see what she witnessed in El Salvador. However, all good things don't necessarily go your way immediately because the proposal may face an uphill battle this year. Last year, Mexican President Andres Manuel López Obrador stated that his administration is more worried about tax evasion than Bitcoin acceptance. He didn't think of it as a need for his focus when compared to other crimes. Kempis might be waiting a long time and she might be facing a long battle if his tenure ends in 2024. A long battle, but she hopes for it to be a worthwhile fight for the country's future generations. As Latin American countries see El Salvador citizenry experience new advancements and financial freedom, they will understand they have a lot to gain from Bitcoin adoption.
For a variety of reasons, Latin America is a suitable location for Bitcoin adoption, many of which will revolve around boosting residents' financial inclusion and maintaining financial stability. So when you think about it, this is for the good of all. As crypto is decentralized and does not rely on government-controlled organizations, banks or other third parties, Latin Americans believe that it is safer than their fiat currencies. Citizens in Latin America no longer have to put their faith in their governments, to which they frequently have little to no faith to, or in the third-party corporations that may act in their own self-interest. Instead, they may make use of the blockchain's trustless attributes. Finally, the amount of Latin American residents who are unbanked is a prominent justification for Latin American nations to embrace cryptocurrencies as legal money. In May 2021, there were an estimated amount of 16.3 million unbanked people in Brazil alone. Because so many Latin Americans lack bank accounts, they are unable to access essential financial services such as the capacity to borrow money, grow wealth, earn interest and store money safely. This also makes it difficult for them to get proper medical care. El Salvador's decision to accept Bitcoin as legal tender is an uplift for the cryptocurrency, an interest from neighbors such as Argentina, Brazil, Nicaragua, Panama, and Paraguay. This indicates a dimensional shift that could lead to widespread adoption of Bitcoin amidst the doubts of governments in stronger economies. If the cryptocurrency's decentralized nature made it almost impossible for any authority to restrict the cryptocurrency's acceptance in the future, the possibility of doing so, once it is widely utilized, diminishes. In simpler words, it's either the government accepts this or they just prolong the spread of cryptocurrencies in their area. The findings of this monetary experiment done in a country the size of Massachusetts might have substantial consequences for other Latin American governments seeking to embrace cryptocurrency according to wealth managers investing in developing economies. According to Jody Gunsberg, the managing director of Coindesk indexes at TradeBlock, switching to cryptocurrencies may be simpler for developing economies than established markets and may even provide some benefits to nations with previously unsteady currencies and high inflation rates. Furthermore, according to Thornburg's Rubin, the activity around cryptocurrencies represents a greater regional trend in favor of fintech innovation that can lower transaction costs. I don't believe that cryptocurrency is a brand new tale on its own, he argues. I believe it is simply an evolution of nations trying different strategies to decrease trade friction while also attempting to provide various types of stability or predictability. Consultants who are knowledgeable in these areas will need to brush up and include new cryptocurrency products into their already expanding knowledge as nations continue to approve more cryptocurrency products, according to Gunsbark. If a user lives in a jurisdiction that comes to recognize other cryptocurrencies as valid transactions, Gunsberg expresses that this might transform how advisors build portfolios to assist clients in achieving their financial goals. Believe it or not, cryptocurrency is the new thing these days and it might come in handy for most people once they know how to use this to their advantage. Advisors should gather further information about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies to be ready for the worst case scenarios that might surface in the future and make sure they acquire their information from reputable sources. According to Gunsberg, they may need to create adequate hedging measures. They should also have in-depth discussions with customers to identify the dangers involving their investments and help them to determine the risk of tolerance. And it looks like El Salvador has really accepted Bitcoin as a form of currency as they are putting up Bitcoin ATMs all around the nation and working to teach its citizen about 70% of home are unbanked how to use the cryptocurrency for everyday transactions. What happens in El Salvador, a nation of 6 million people, will be keenly followed, in my thinking, by other emerging market countries and the rest of the globe," said Pacquiao's of Big Sur Partners. Bitcoin has been taking the world by storm, and who knows when or if it ends. What do you think about this? Make sure you stay connected and we'll see you at the next one.